assembling a new Stuart 501 boiler. Part 1. This boiler is old but unused and the end plate castings need fettling as I show in the video. The stainless steel side panels came from Clevedon Steam. They were prototypes and the top bends are a bit tight. The new Clevedon Steam panels are underneath the one that is burnt on the top. This shows the importance of having suitable heat insulation. I don't know where this top panel came from, I found it in the workshop one day. I'm going to take a detailed look at the boiler first. This tube in the centre is not a water tube. It is a superheater tube or a steam dryer tube. The steam is taken from the top of the boiler inside, down this tube, and it exits on the bush to the tap. And as can clearly be seen, this steam tube passes over the fire again, so the steam becomes very hot. One of the water tubes is slightly bent, but this is not a problem, so I left it as it was. Underneath the burnt side panel are a pair of Clevedon Steam stainless steel side panels, complete with heat insulation. More about this shortly. This 501 boiler is part of the 500 range of boilers. Three boilers. The first one is a 500 without a superheater. The second is a 501 with a superheater. Then there's a larger boiler called a 504 with a superheater and more water tubes and it's physically a good bit bigger. The first job is to remove the steam tap and have a close look at it. Stuart steam taps use stainless steel inserts, and this one is quite a small diameter. This clip shows the hole in the boiler bush on top of the boiler. Yes, it looks a bit small to me, but I'm not going to drill it out, because this bush connects to the superheater tube, and I don't want to disturb it. As you can see, this side panel has had considerable heat behind it at some stage. And I've no idea how this happened, but it's not important, because I have the two new stainless steel ones. In case you're wondering what the black line is on the boiler, in a previous video I drew on this boiler to show the place where the water gauge fits. Let's take a closer look at these side panels, quite nicely bent up from stainless steel, which is not easy stuff to work with. They're not actually manufactured by Clevedon Steam. Jerry at Clevedon Steam just has them made by a metalworking company. I'm going to try a test fit of the castings. The boiler fits where it should, but the casting edges are all rough. I now need to do a bit of fettling to clean up all the rough edges. A needle file does the job, but I don't think my lifespan's long enough to get through the job itself. These end plates are just as cast, and if you use them like this, there will be a problem. As you can see, part of the casting protrudes below the mounting feet, and this would be a problem if you tighten the boiler down onto a board, then the mounting feet would just break. I know this from experience. All of the edges of these castings need serious fettling. Well, serious in a small way, they are only small parts. What I'm about to show looks very easy to do, and it is if you've had a lot of practice. I started the job in the outer part of the workshop by using the one inch belt sander to remove the protrusions from underneath the feet. There is, however, a much easier way of doing this involving the use of a four inch belt sander. The problem is you only get this wrong once. I've done this job so many times on so many different pieces of metal that I instinctively know how to hold the part to make sure only the protrusions are removed and not the feet. These are thin enough to start with. Back now to the one inch belt sander to clean up the inside edges. And it's really easy to dig into the casting and make a mess of it. So if you're going to do this and haven't done it before, I recommend practicing the process using some pieces of scrap metal. You need a very light touch for this and you must control the position of the casting at all times very accurately. On my one inch belt sander, one edge of the sanding belt is not fully supported and this is quite useful because it goes around corners very well. It's not too bad with these parts because they're of a big enough size to dissipate the heat, but if you're cleaning up smaller parts, be really careful because the parts will get very hot very quickly. 
and as you scream and let go of the part and it falls on the floor and fractures, you'll wish you hadn't done that. I always have a tub of cold water very close to the sanders. And with small parts, I dip them in the water all the time. But I don't need to do it with these because they're big enough to dissipate the heat, as I mentioned earlier. Back now to the 4-inch belt sander to clean up the edges. In this clip you can see how rough the edges really are. For this job, a gentle and controlled touch is what is required. And don't forget the bit where the chimney fits. This part of the casting was very rough and it took quite a while to clean it up. Time for a test fit of the Clevedon Steam stainless steel side panels. And, miraculously, they sort of fit OK. It's not bothering me because if I was being a purist I wouldn't use stainless steel, I would use mild steel and paint it, but then the paint burns off over time and they go rusty, so stainless steel is a good idea for a general purpose model boiler. Clevedon Steam's website is well worth a look, they can supply a good range of boilers and small engines. Clevedon Steam gas burners, even though they're very small, give out a ridiculously high amount of heat for the size. The last part of the fettling job is the inside edge, where the end plate castings are in contact with the boiler shell. For this, I used a needle file and it didn't take long. These side plates are new, but they're old stock and they're very rusty. First of all, I'm removing the bulk of the rust with a wire brush, which takes ages. And the worst thing about doing it this way, apart from the physical effort, is the wire brush does not get into all the corners. What I've done here is put the parts in a plastic tub, and I'm pouring on the parts some stuff called evapo rust. and if I leave this for 24 hours, in theory, the rust should disappear. I'll revisit this tomorrow. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.